Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is the worship service for Sunday, August 23rd, and we begin a three-part sermon series based on an American folk tale called The Three Trees. I will begin our worship service by reading a bit of the story, and we'll finish the story uh, or read a little bit next Sunday and fi finish it on the Sunday after that. The Tale of the Three Trees. Once upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. The first little tree looked up at the stars twinkling, twinkling like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. The second little tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and busy women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. With that, I end our reading, um, our first reading, and I invite you to quiet your hearts and minds now and prepare yourselves for worship. We begin with the call to worship. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. The Confession and Forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, bread from heaven. Amen. Let us confess our sinfulness before God and one another, trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God. Give us your righteousness, the strength to put aside our failures and the courage to try again. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ the Savior is born. You are loved and forgiven in the name of Jesus, who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn books to hymn number 286, Your Little Ones, Dear Lord, Are We. Hymn number 286.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture readings for today begin with portions of Psalm 96. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Our second reading for today is a very familiar passage from Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 6. While they were there, the time came for her, Mary, to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and laid, wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the host, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 276, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Hymn number 276. <laughs>
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every time we turn on the news, we hear of something new that we should be should or could be afraid of. Our world is going through a very difficult time. It certainly is easy to be afraid. Today's scripture reading is one of the most familiar of all the stories from the Bible. The last time we heard this story read in a worship service was December 24th, 2019, about eight months ago, before the coronavirus spread through our world with such a vengeance, before millions of people were sickened and hundreds of thousands around the world die. To think back to that time of last Christmas is almost beyond our imaginations because it certainly seems a lot longer ago than just eight months. One of the phrases of the story of the nativity, of the birth of Jesus, that seems especially pertinent is, do not be afraid. The saint angels say that at least three times during the birth story of Jesus. These words were spoken by the angel when he comes to Mary and tells her that she will conceive and bear a child. Do not be afraid, the angel says, for you have found favor with God. You will bear a son and you will name him Jesus. These same words were spoken by an angel to Joseph when he was told of Mary's pregnancy and given instructions on how to act toward and with her. Do not be afraid. Mary will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And finally, these words were spoken by the angel to the shepherds. Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, for unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, these folks, all humble, unimportant people in their world, they don't have power, they don't have status, and it doesn't matter if it's about religion or ec economics or politics or military. They just, they're just plain folks, simple people living out their lives as best they can as a carpenter, as a keepers of sheep, as a wife and mother. Yet, God speaks to them and shakes up the world in ways that were beyond imagination. God uses humble, ordinary people because God knows that humble, ordinary people can make a difference. Which leads me to the manger. We find it in a stable. If you've ever been in a barn actively housing animals, then you know what kind of place a barn is. It's not exactly dirt, dust, or bug-free. It's not odor-free. But it is an important place on a farm because it's where animals are housed, often at night for safety and protection. A place that is able, in its own way, to provide safety, shelter, and protection for a poor traveling couple on the verge of giving birth. So it is that Mary and Joseph find a place to rest in a stable. So it is that Mary gives birth to the Son of God and looking about in what was likely a pretty dark space finds the safest place to lay the child in a manger. A humble, simple wooden box that normally holds dry hay and grass to feed the animals. As Mary lays the Christ child in that manger, suddenly its purpose is transformed. From now on, it will be seen in a completely different light. Instead of a rough box full of feed for animals, it has become a bed for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now I wonder about something. I wonder about how something humble and unimportant, insignificant, if you will, because becomes something other. I wonder about the transformation because on the outside, the manger is still a rough wooden box. Our mind, our perspective, however, has changed. We see it now through different eyes. And how is it that our perspective is changed? By the presence of God. 
Paul speaks about this change in the book of Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The presence of God in our lives changes our perspective, transforms and renews our minds, our way of looking at things. None of us may be called to do great and mighty things that will make it into the history books. Paul, Paul encourages each of us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice because it's not about history books. It's about God. Paul's words are, were written to inspire each of us to present our lives to God and follow as God leads. It won't be easy. It might not be safe. And it might not be clear what exactly we are to do. But we are encouraged to allow our minds and by extension our lives to be transformed by God. To be changed to the point that we are able to recognize the will of God to be able to recognize what is good and acceptable and perfect. And as we approach the end of our lives, may we all be able to kneel before the throne of grace, the throne of God, on the judgment day, and hear God say something like, well done, good and faithful servant. As I continue through the next Sundays, telling the folk tale, the three trees, you will hear the rest of the story. Now, it is possible that you can already guess what the end of the story will be. That's okay. Teachers ask their students to do this kind of thing all the time in reading classes. But just because you can guess the end of the story doesn't mean you should dismiss it. Instead, let it stay with you. Allow it to feed your heart and mind so as to lead you to ongoing transformation in your life. Remember always, God doesn't necessarily call us to greatness or power. The vast majority of us are called simply to be humble, to be faithful, to be true to our identity as a child of God, and to recognize the power of God to do those amazing things with simple, humble, faithful people like us. Just as God used Mary and Joseph and a humble manger to do amazing things, God can and will continue to do amazing things with us. Let us pray. Dear God, transform us. Bring us a new and right spirit that we might be humble persons of action in your world. Guide us, bless us, and keep us in our going out and our coming in. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn books to hymn number 278, Away in a Manger. Hymn number 278. I invite you to profess your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's spend a little time in prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. We ask this today, especially for St. Ansgar's Lutheran in Cannon Falls and St. John's Lutheran in Goodhue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved, in trouble or adversity, or sick and in need of care. We pray today for David Broin, Einer Norman, Jesse Otto, Scott Sorensen, Linda Thompson, Max Tilderquist, and Mike Schwendeman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Bless our efforts as we begin the preparations for the community dinner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You demonstrate love and care for all people. Today we ask you to bless and keep Dave Carlson, Dustin Lindahl, Warren Schmidt, Logan Winstrom, and Carolyn Lindstrom, who celebrate birthdays this week. Be with them in their going out and their coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. We ask today for you to comfort the family of Linda Buck as they grieve the death of Linda's sister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I would like to continue with a generosity moment and simply say thank you to everyone who continues to support VESA so generously. It is rare for our church to be this financially strong as we are in mid to late August. Often we are um, a little bit concerned, but we are doing okay and it is because of your faithfulness to us, and so I want to say thank you. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. We ask, O Lord, that you give us the courage to follow in the footsteps of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you um, as, watch, as um, viewers of the worship service to open up your communion portions and to share communion as you are able. The musical interlude is Love Has Come, hymn number 292, Love Has Come. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and you give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. Our musical interlude is hymn number 269, Once in Royal David's City, hymn number 269. Some announcements as we close our worship service for today. Good morning. 
So glad that you are here, are watching us and worshiping with us today. Vacation Bible School begins on Monday evening at 6 o'clock at the picnic shelter near the east parking lot. If you are watching this service on Sunday morning or at your convenience on Sunday, whatever, um, deadline for registration is tonight. And I definitely need to know how many um, kids are going to be there because I need to have enough supplies. So please get the message to me um, as soon as possible. This year's theme for Vacation Bible School is Journey with Jesus through Holy Week. Um, and as, uh, as some additional notes, everyone needs to wear a mask. And weather allowing, we will move from the picnic shelter, which is in the East Park, to the church sanctuary, and then down to the lawn by the Lutheran Center as our evening progresses. Finally, uh, in regard to Vacation Bible School, because of time limitations, we won't be uh, serving any snacks. So don't, don't plan that, that the kids are going to get a meal or even a snack. We close our worship now with a blessing. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.